Thank you so much, Alethea Lamb. That was beautiful. What a, bad, what a wonderful way to put us all in the mood, this receptiveness, the sacredness of sound, which we'll be exploring and experiencing this evening together. Just as important as the sound, of course, is the silence. And just have a brief piece, a brief video to show you about the importance of silence. It's from the New York Times, and it was a 360 degree video. So the images are a little distorted, but it's not really the images we're after. It's after this, the sound of the voice of the person talking and also what he has to say, the depth of what he has to say. And this evening, as we go through the sounds, there'll be brief pauses, moments of silence between not only the notes, but between the instruments we'll be playing this evening. And I'd love you to enter that silence in the same fullness as you absorb the sounds. So just take a moment. Relax, you can look, close your eyes, and just enjoy this video's The Sanctuaries of Silence. to imagine that a sound could transform someone's life but it happened to me I was 27 years old and on one of those road trips between your old life and your new one I pulled over to get some rest as I lay on the ground I watched the storm develop. I remember hearing the thunder define the far reaches of the valley as the storm passed over me, drenching me. This was the first time I experienced true listening. I guess you could say that was my baptism. By holding a microphone, I became a better listener. I learned that a microphone doesn't listen for what's important. It doesn't judge. It doesn't interfere. My whole life, I had been listening for what was important, rather than taking things in with equal value. Every place has a sound. A passing breeze that indicates a weather change. The first bird songs of spring. And the shifting tide reminding us of the celestial ballet. All of these experiences connect us back to the land just listen.
Silence is the poetics of space. What it means to be in a place. The whole topography of the surrounding landscape is revealed to me in the many layers of the echo that come towards me. And I think to myself, I know exactly where I am. Silence isn't the absence of something, but the presence of everything. When I speak of silence, I mean silence from noise pollution of modern life, sounds that have nothing to do with the natural acoustic system. Silence is the presence of time undisturbed. It can be felt within the chest. It nurtures our nature. And silence is on the verge of extinction. There is not one place left on planet Earth that is set aside and off limits to noise pollution. Not one square inch of silence left untouched by the modern world. Our typical anti-noise strategies offer no relief. Earplugs. Noise canceling headphones. Even noise abatement laws offer no real solution because they do nothing to help us reconnect and listen to the land. And the land is speaking. When I listen, I have to be quiet. I become very peaceful. And I think what I enjoy most about listening is that I disappear. I disappear. Perhaps you'll disappear tonight as you listen. Listen to the silence, to the notes, the notes between the notes. My name is Paul Kay, and I'll be presenting this evening. And you'll hear me on some instruments. And also, you'll hear the lovely Lucy Dickinson on piano. Excuse me, what's that light there, please? What, what are you doing? Thank you very much. Uh, suddenly this glaring light. Please don't uh, do that. The, the idea here is for you this evening is not to kind of just hear for your Instagram photographs. Um, it's really about you taking a journey. It's called a sound bath in modern parlance. But I like to call it a sound journey because the sound is going to take you somewhere. And for that, I'd like you to keep your eyes closed this evening. It's not a rule. You can open your eyes. But if you open your eyes, you'll come back from the journey. You'll probably hear many sounds this evening that you haven't heard before. And there's going to be that temptation to, oh my god, what is that? And what's going on? And then that'll bring you back from your journey. So I recommend you just keep your eyes closed. 
And when it's silent, it doesn't mean it's over. We'll be very clear when this evening is complete. So it's all to allow you to take your own journey into what we're doing. So I would love you to be quiet. And of course, we we'll, won't be taking photographs uh, during the evening. If someone is snoring next to you, you can just gently let them know that that's not a sound that you've come here for. <laughs> Allow yourself to take this journey. We'll begin with a short meditation, and then we will begin the sounds, and we'll be guided along for the evening. So please get yourself into a comfortable position. If you're on your yoga mats, now would be the time to lay down. Yeah, it is a little darker at the back because we are recording this, and this is online, so welcome to everybody online, and thank you for joining us, wherever you are. It's the beauty of today's world is that we can reach across the whole world. So oh, good, just settle yourself down. And close your eyelids. And we're going to begin this evening by bringing our attention to the rising and the falling of our breath. Notice how immediately there's a qualitative change in the room. Whether we do this with one, ten, a hundred, a thousand people. This same phenomena takes place. The quality of the room changes just by bringing our attention to something that we are doing every moment of our lives. Perhaps the answer to, as to why this happens can be found in our language. In most languages throughout the world, the word breath and the word spirit are the same, if not very closely related. Spiritus in Latin, ruach in Hebrew, chi in Chinese, prana in Hindu. In our own language, inspiration, respiration, respiriting. It lets us know that the breath is more than just the pumping in of air, but is a gateway or a doorway into a vast and mysterious world, a world we're about to enter this evening together. We can enhance this experience by having the idea that the breath isn't something that we take. It's something we receive. Again, the quality of the room changes. We move from any impulse to grab or grasp or force or hold on. And instead, we can release, let go, empty, open. The kind of openness we have when we're about to meet a beloved and trusted friend or receive a precious gift. For we are receiving a precious gift, the gift of life. For without the breath, we die. And it's a pure gift because it's given to us the moment we enter this world without us having earned it and without any conditions except one, that we let go of the previous breath. And if we can say thank you, thank you for this precious gift of life and really mean it, another doorway opens for us 
a doorway into grace. For gratitude and grace have the same root word, gratus. Now with each breath, we receive life and we receive grace. And we can go even deeper by doing absolutely nothing at all except being still and waiting. And if we're lucky, we hit that sweet spot, that magical moment when we realize that we're not breathing, we're being breathed. If I were to ask you to listen to the classical music playing in the room, you may say, hmm, I'm not hearing any classical music playing right now. And I would say to you, well, please listen very carefully because it is playing in this room right here, right now. And I would bring in a radio and I would dial in the classical music station and the room would be filled with classical music. The music didn't come in with the radio. The radio was just a tuning instrument. We human beings are tuning instruments with the capacity to tune into any vibration, any frequency, any level of consciousness. So if we wanted to raise the vibration in this room, we wouldn't have to bring anything from outside of the room into it. We would merely dial in the higher vibration from the potential that is already here now. So let's do that. Just now we ask for the highest and purest light from the highest and purest source to surround and fill this room and each one of us here and online for the highest good. And the quality of the room changes again. From all of the possibilities available to us, we selected, we dialed in, we called ourselves forward into a sacredness, a holiness, a sacred light, a holy light, a holy spirit that now pervades this room and each one of us here. Now with each breath, we receive life, we receive grace, and we receive light. We're meditating. Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist monk and meditation teacher, and Eckhart Tolle both say that one conscious breath in and one conscious breath out is meditation. We certainly know it's good for our health, it relaxes us, it reduces stress, it can bring us present into this moment, and it can quieten our mind. But it is a passive process. And this evening we want to be active. Active because we're going on a journey, a journey into who we truly are as a divine spiritual being, and even beyond that, into the source of all things of everything, sometimes called the source, God, spirit, the divine, the all. Let's call it the heart of God. And to be active, we're going to use sound. This is the sound that's spoken of in the Bible when it said that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That word is sound. Later it says the word was made flesh. 
we are sound. In the East, they say nada brahma, the world is sound. We're going to attune to this sound through the use of a sacred word or mantra. Now, if you've taken a yoga class, you've undoubtedly chanted the mantra om or om. We're going to chant hu, spelled h-u, hu. It's an ancient name for God with a very, very high frequency and vibration that can take us from this physical world through all levels of consciousness into who we truly are and even beyond that into the heart of God. So let's chant the hue together three times out loud and then listen. Listen for this sound, this inner sound. We'll receive the breath and then chant out loud together. Receive the breath. You. We listen for the sound, the inner sound. In the East, they call this sound the audible life stream. Pythagoras called it the celestial melodies. The Sufis called it the unstruck sound. We'll call it the sound current of God. Some people hear this sound. Some people feel or sense this sound. Others just know this sound, for the sound is not separate from who we truly are. We can amplify our attunement to this sound through our loving. Now in the Bible it says that God is love, and that whoever dwells in love dwells in God, and God in them. I could have quoted from many sacred scriptures from around the world, and they would have all have pretty much pointed us in the same direction, that unconditional love is divine, is holy, is godlike. Perhaps you felt this unconditional love when you've held a baby or a young child. Maybe you received this unconditional loving from a parent or a grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, a close friend, a loving partner, a teacher. Perhaps you've received it from nature or from a pet. 
whether you've given or you've received this unconditional loving, take a moment to get in touch with what that was like, what that is like. And when you connect with that feeling sense or feeling tone, take a moment to give that unconditional loving to yourself, loving yourself as you are in this moment without conditions, without expectation without demands, just as you are. And from that place of loving, let us chant the hue three more times together out loud. Receive the breath. Hue. listen. We listen for the sound, the inner sound. When we chant with loving, our heart center opens. And you may now feel your energy moving upwards from your heart towards the center of your head. Perhaps you see a color in your inner vision. Maybe you feel a pressure on your forehead or a tingling on your crown. Your journey has begun. Your journey into the vast, infinite inner worlds inner dimensions, inner levels of consciousness, of God, of spirit. Your journey into who you truly are, and even beyond that, into the heart of God. For such a journey, it's helpful to have a guide, a guide to show us where to go in all this vastness, and just as importantly, where not to go. Fortunately, that guide exists within each human being on the planet. Sometimes called the inner master, we'll call it the mystical traveler consciousness. And we gain access to this consciousness within us through our loving vibration and through dialing it in. So just now we ask that the consciousness of the mystical traveler come forward from within each of our hearts and guide us on our inner journey into who we truly are and beyond into the heart of God for the highest good.
and if we're carrying a load or a burden that we no longer need, and if we're willing to let it go or put it aside, we ask that the consciousness of the mystical traveler transmute any negativity, any upset, anxiety, fear, worry, concern, dis-ease, taking it back into the nothingness from which it came and replacing it with unconditional loving for our highest good. now with our load lighter and with our energy established in our higher spiritual centers, in the center of our head and on our crown, and with light and love and sound and the mystical traveler to guide us on our inner journey, let us chant the hue three more times together out loud and vibrate those higher spiritual centers. Receive the breath. And we listen. We listen for the sound, the inner sound. To assist you attune to this sound, I'm going to play some instruments. The idea here is for you to listen not so much to the notes themselves, but to the notes between the notes, the harmonics, the vibrations, the overtones. And to follow those overtones back inside of you until the outer sound disappears and you connect with the inner sound, the sound current of God and you ride that current back deep inside you into who you truly are and beyond.
continue your inner journey. As we listen to a guided meditation now from John Roger, the founder of all we're doing here at the Four Seasons this week. All the events are based on his inspiration, his presence. So we'll listen to a meditation of his on one of the most fundamental sounds that there is, the sound of our own heart. So continue on your inner journey as you follow along this gentle short meditation. Let's have just a few minutes meditation. I'm going to just take you through a technique. It's very, very simple. It's also very, very effective. You can do it with your eyes open or closed. Just take a deep breath. Let it out. And let go physical tension with it. Take in another deep breath. And let it out. And let go of emotional tension. Just will it out. Emotional tension, physical tension's gone. One more breath in. Let go of mental tension. Just let it go. Just do rhythmic breathing now, just at your own pace. But start listening to the beat of your heart. It's going to take attention and a good attitude. Listen to the heart. Listening is also feeling and sensing. It is not necessarily hearing with the ears. Take in another deep breath. Release the blocks to your heart. And what you're going to hear is the sound of God in the physical world, which is your heartbeat. Just keep focusing on that. It may help you to put your hand over the physical location of your heart to give you a reference point. But it is not the physical heart necessarily you're going to listen to. Now, some of you are already hearing the other sound that produced the beat. Keep right on going. Just keep right on listening. Some of you are hearing the whooshing sound. That's right. That's the light of God coming forward to sound as it comes to your levels of consciousness. My voice won't disturb you. Don't worry about it. If anything, it will strengthen you because you have to overcome that also. Another deep breath, please. Release any negativity from your body as illness. Just let it go. And as you listen to the heartbeat, it's just like, God, I receive health, wealth, and happiness. And it is, heal me of anything in me that is not for my good. It is that openness. Take in another deep breath and relax the spine. Just tense it up and then relax it. And forget where the seat is now. Yes, I'm aware some of you already are past that. You're on your own. You're doing fine. As you listen to the heart, you're also seeing things in there. 
Just watch him. Don't think, ask what it is. Just watch it. We say always, etc. Keep going. Keep going. You won't get trapped. Keep going. Certainly nothing to worry about. It's just you in there listening to yourself. Let this light of God that is now in you go freely to those who are not present here, who need assistance according to their own spiritual form. And you can just in your inner thoughts say their name to yourself or see their face and let them go. Just let it go. Have no concern whether they get it or not. They're getting it in you. And they're going to be healed inside of you. And if anybody's hurt your feelings or you felt unjustly accused or picked on, inside of you, just love them. And let them go. Don't have to dwell on it. Just, just a concept. Yeah, you can do 15 or 20 as fast as it took me to tell you that. <laughs> if you've got that many. Now that inner music, just keep listening to that. It's a rhythm. That, that upper pressure on the head is the soul lifting up above the body. Consciousness is lifting. Just let it lift. Have no concern. You're not going anywhere. You can still feel the chair if you have to. If you lose it, drop back to the heart. Drop back to the heart. Listen to the heart. Yes, you see how easy that is? There's your reference point. Keep moving it again. Don't drop into sleep. Come more aware, more aware, more awake, more fulfilling, more everything. It is a state of acceptance of your own beingness. past, present, and future, all from this moment of the heart and meditation. You know, the tingling of the feet and the hands and that, that's all part of it. Don't, don't have a concern with that. These are just phenomena of the body. You that are with the mystical traveler consciousness, just move into that purple form and just go ahead with it. It's, it's all clear.
Taking a deep breath. As you let it out, feel your body. Taking another breath. As you do, breathing the awareness of your mind, your emotions, and bring everything back into this room in perfect, perfect balance. Tighten up the spine area, the muscles around it. Feel them. That's right. Straighten it back up again. Good. You may open your eyes. You can do this meditation for 30, 40 minutes at a time that we've shown you here in the last 5 to 10 minutes. Beirush Beishan. John, Roger ended with Beirush Beishan, which is a ancient Hebraic or Sufi saying that means the blessings already are. And much like that classical music that we had to dial in that was already in the room, the blessings are already here. They already are. Which one do you want to leave with tonight? Which one do you want to dial in, attune to? It's here for you. We always ask for the highest good. So just take a moment or blessing for you, for your highest good this evening. Can you leave abundance, joy, loving, Laughter, happiness, attunement. It's all here for you, for you to dial in and ask for your highest good. If you haven't come back from your journey already, please wiggle your fingers and your toes, gently coming back into your body, into consciousness. Perhaps become aware of the light against your eyelids. And when you're ready, you can take a deeper breath and gently open your eyes into the room. Welcome back. It was lovely to hear, have you with us here this evening. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being such a beautiful, attentive, quiet, and sound-attuned group. Just two quick, very announcements. Uh, please feel free to hang out for 15 minutes or so. You don't have to rush away. Uh, Alethea is going to play her beautiful sound, so please stay in the room. You can chat, but you know we'll have that beautiful music to listen to. If you want to attend more of these sound events, we have them at our center in Los Angeles, Peace Awareness Labyrinth and Gardens. We have a beautiful gardens and labyrinth for you to visit. I think we have some cards. I think the next one is um, July the 24th in the evening at uh, 7.30. Uh, it's a beautiful center we have there, and uh, please come and visit us. And we'll, I'll be there with these instruments and hopefully with Lucy. And a huge thanks to Lucy Dickinson on piano this evening. The, uh, the pieces that she played for us were entirely improvised. Um, she just attunes to what's happening in the room, <clears throat> what's happening with everything and the instruments, and just makes up these amazing pieces. <clears throat> um, so thank you. Thank you to Alethea, the sound people, the, all the assistants. Thank you so much for being here. What I, what I want to leave you with, though, is the encouragement to attend the events we're having here on Friday and Saturday, all day Friday and Saturday. We have uh, our spiritual director, John Morton, along with Ron and Mary Halnick, Drs. Ron and Mary Halnick, 
from the University of Santa Monica will be producing this beautiful workshop, Heaven on Earth. It's the first time we've done it. This whole kind of uh, week here is about heaven on earth, having heaven on earth, moving to that place inside of us. So please come and join us. It's open to anybody or tell your friends. Um, we expect to have a, a wonderful, spiritually attuned, uplifting, fun time that will leave you really renewed, regenerated, and learning a lot as well. Ron, Drs. Ron and Mary Halnick are just amazing. So uh, you're in for a treat. Please join us on Friday and Saturday. And again, if you want to visit us in Los Angeles, please take the card, and we'll see you again. Otherwise, thank you again for being here. God bless you. Safe journey home. Take care. And thank you online, too, people online, all those people watching online, thank you. If you'd like some lovely cookies and tea, please join us outside as well, or feel free to be in the room. Just, just outside the doors here.